sound carol and we're on way welcome to 2021 not that one you remember this thing up here yeah you didn't expect us to be ready did you bloody out so yeah welcome to the welcome future back. we're in the future now 2021 who'd have thunk it eh so yeah i thought on that theme as we're in the future, I thought we'd just remind you about the uh, the super capacitor powered acoustic guitar pickups from the future. <laughs> so one of the things that I hate about acoustic guitars is when the, the battery ends up rattling around inside. Um, so this is this is the answer to that. My dreams came true, and somebody finally came up with a way of. Um, removing the need for an, a, a battery in an acoustic guitar. It's powered by this super capacitor. So I'm gonna actually fit this for you today. So if you're new here, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, by the way, the guitar that you saw in the intro, that was one of my guitars that I custom made for um, a guy called Stephen Scoucher. And actually it's, I think it was his third guitar that he'd had from me. So that quite often happens is People are really nervous about having a custom guitar, um, but then once they take the plunge and they, they really fall in love with the guitar, they quite often have more than one. So, uh, um, yeah, if I look a bit ragged, sorry about that. My shaver ran out of batteries just <laughs> 30 seconds before we went live. So, um, yes. So, yeah, if you want me to make you a custom guitar, then... Um, that's the kind of thing you can expect. That's what I do. You're going to show um, me a bit? This one here is, a, is another one that I've, I'm just about to start, actually. Um, we did a Zoom. I did a Zoom meeting with a guy called Ricky just the other day, and um, we came up with this, this design. Uh, so he's, he's commissioning me. Um, got to do, finalise the last details, but um, a big D guitar made by me. Heading your way, Ricky, hopefully soon. So yeah, um, keep an eye out on the channel and you, you might see me doing bits and bobs on this one. And um, this will be the first guitar that I um, make from scratch this year. So keep an eye out for that. Also, um, I'm gonna talk to you in a bit detail in a bit, but I um, also wanna know, what do you guys want from 2021? Answers in the comments, please. Do you want so, any comments? <clears throat> Yeah. Super clung and Oh, we got comments already. Super clung's here already. No, just he said your hair's got longer. Hey, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Does your hair's longer? By an immeasurable Can amount. Can you hear me I'm okay? Sure it is. Uh, there was some complaints last year about me being too quiet and mumbling. Am I loud enough? Yeah. Also, I did rig up a, car a carol cam 
by popular request, but she won't use it. So oh, come on, show them. Show Carol's them over. There. You do it. You've got the controls. Wait, I, I can't do it. You have to do it. I, don't, I, I have no which. If camera. you give me the controls for Carol Cam, I'd have you on it all the time, wouldn't I? <sighs> I don't know where it is. I can't see it. So that's fine. Well, we're not going to leave it there. Look, it's over here. Oh, right. Okay. So well, you've that's... just got to go like that. <laughs> Carol Cam. Rubbish. It's rubbish. Right, anyway, we got told off for goofing about. <laughs> yeah, we've had um, hundreds of amazing positive comments on the, on the YouTube site. But isn't it amazing how I only remember the less than a handful of <laughs> derogatory comments. So, yes, um, I was derised for goofing about too much at the start of our live streams. But hey man, I'm doing this for free. I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> Pay me for it and I won't goof about so much. So Liar. we do try, we, <laughs> we do try not to goof about. I am gonna do, I mean, every time I do a live stream, I show you something, hopefully that you won't see anywhere else. And uh, we, we actually do physical demonstrations live with no safety net. So it's not easy. Let me tell you, things can go wrong. So, um, so I'm not going to waste too much of your time. I'm going to get straight on with it, and I'm going to start um, fitting this acoustic guitar pickup. So while I'm doing that, Carol, I think you've got some things to say, haven't you? Well, there's, the, well, there's a whole load. Just as it's the first one of the year, right? Let's just say that we've got um, JK is um, he's over in Texas. He got his. Um, his uh, fret slot jig kit and a whole load of other bits and bobs that arrived today. He was opening it right at the top of the uh, program mark. Um, we've got Super Clunk, um, as you know, in Hawaii. We've got um, uh, Andrew, he's watching in Wales. We've got um, Azad, um, who I believe is in Iran. I think it's uh, Azad that's in Iran. We've got Matt Beals in Germany. We've got Marcel in Holland. We've got Matt Tomon over in Denver. Uh, we've got uh, a new, a couple of new people. Uh, we've got, um, what was it, Brian Raglan channel. And, um, well, I'll, I'll look back because there's quite a few people in. Texas Toast is in. Hello to you. Hi, Texas Toast. Um, and um, Matt Beals. Uh, listen, Matt, your parcel's on its way. I'll need to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little spot to talk about parcels. How exciting later on. Um, but um, Jim McMillan's watching, hello, he's in Irvin. Uh, TV 101's just arrived, he's a bit late. Theron's in the house, Theron Thomas. Hey, Theron. He's hoping to come back this year. Um, so, Boo, James, um, if I've forgotten your names, there's loads of people, all the regulars, thank you very much. Um, and we've been very quiet over the last couple of weeks because we've been sleeping a lot, really, and um, dealing with frozen pipes and all sorts of things. But we're, we're, we've got plans and um, we might even let you in on them. Anyway, back to Mark. That's the problem, Thank see? You. That's the problem. There's a battery bag in there, which is normally Velcroed into the heel uh, block. And uh, yeah, it's one of my pet hates with acoustic guitars is the battery bag. So uh, quite often we will fit a, um, a battery box. It's my favorite battery box, spring loaded. So it pops out nice and easy. And this is what I like to fit to stop the battery rattling about. But even better if you can avoid the battery completely. Now, one way to do that, of course, would be to have an external preamp, a passive um, transducer in the guitar, have an external preamp. Those tend to be pricey. Um, most people um, don't really want to go to that extent. So the advantages of doing that, of course, is that you've got two separate systems that you can upgrade separately. Um, and, you know, your search for the holy grail of acoustic guitar pickups can commence at that point. But for the rest of us mere mortals, um, it's nice to have everything on board so that you can just plug in and play anywhere you go, basically. So that's what these are all about. Um, so here's the actual thing that we're talking about. It's called the um, Acoustic Trio. Um, it's a really bad name, I think, because with a name like Trio, you expect to have three pickups, don't you? But there's, there's the pickup, 
the preamp and the battery. And so that's, that's the three parts of the system and they're all pre-wired. So, I mean, one of the beauties of this system is uh, no wiring. <laughs> Amazing. So um, we have the link for these, by the way, is in the description. We are actually selling these on the website. Um, I, I only try and put the best, the best stuff um, on the website. So um, we just put those on today and um, making those available for you guys. Um, it is available with and without a volume control. Let me just show you. It does come with a, a pre-wired volume control, which is on a ribbon connector. So again, no wiring necessary. Even, even an idiot like me can do it. So we're gonna fit that one into here. I'm gonna fit this one here into this here guitar. So this is a, one of my old models. It's called a Camino. We used to call it the Camino. Um, but we don't make this one anymore. Uh, having said that, of course, I will. I will make you one if you ask me. <laughs> it's a really nice guitar. Um, yeah, it's a small body guitar with a 14 fret neck joint. So um, the, the neck joins at the 14 fret. Uh, mostly these small body guitars nowadays, we join at the 12th fret make a like a parlor style guitar. So with this one, I was trying to kind of like, um, I was trying to, um, you know, cover a lot of bases all at once. So a small guitar, but without losing any of the fret access and any of the tone is, was, is the idea. Um, so it looks like it needs a new set of strings. I'm just going to take these off completely and put a new set on. Um, one of the things that's a bit of a misnomer, really, is people think that... Um, not a misnomer, I don't know what the word is. A bit of a myth. People think you're not supposed to take all the strings off at once. And um, I guess that would be true for, like, an old, an old vintage treasured guitar. You want to change the strings one at a time, really, to preserve the tension on the neck as much as possible. But most guitars... Um, you take your guitar into a shop, the first thing they would do is take all the strings off. And if I'm going to replace the pickup, obviously I'm going to need to take all the strings off. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Um, the disadvantage of taking all the strings off is that the truss rod might settle in a different position and might need resetting. Um, it's quite rare that that happens, so I'm not going to worry about it. So what's going on in the rest of the world then, Carol? Well, um, put those on. We've, we've just, um, I, I meant to say when I was, I got overexcited reading everybody's names out, because it's amazing, there's people everywhere. Um, and I just want Brian, Brian Ragland's channel is saying that he, he's loving our accents. Um, and he, our accents. <laughs> yeah, he wants to move to Scotland so bad. The UK rocks. Well, that's really, that's very cool. Thing. Well, this is not a Scottish accent. I hope you understand no, we're, that. We're, we're, we are. Although uh, I might have developed a twang. I don't know. I. We're, we're, so we're, we're actually, we're probably classed as incomers still because we've, we've, we've been here. We've only been here 18 years. years so. We've only been here 18 years. Um, but um, uh, just what I should say, because we have got some newcomers in, is that please feel free to ask any questions. Um, you can ask questions relating to what Mark's doing. Um, we're, we're, we've got a little delay, but not much of a delay. Um, and it, you can ask him any questions. Also, feel free to ask anything about anything. Um, and I will note it and ask it at a point when, um, you know, when uh, he's, when, when a good point is. I mean, I've lost the, lost the plot. speech. Um, and Theron Thomas says, Theron says, don't put yourself down, Mark. That's their job. <laughs> Cheers, Theron. We'll get on with it then. Um... Yeah, so we've got we've got a few few new people in 
the house. Shall I, whilst you're... Go on, while I'm looking for my spanner. Right, let me just... Uh, there's one thing I do want to say, which is quite serious, is that um, we, we all have a problem in the UK at the moment um, with uh, deliveries, and um, I, I'm not going to go on in, into the ins and outs of it, but a lot of UK companies have stopped sending stuff... Um, internationally stop sending stuff outside the UK because it's all a bit complicated at the moment. So I want to say two things. One is that we might have to temporarily suspend um, European particular deliveries, um, but we're not really sure. So if you place any orders, um, uh, I will write to you um, when I found out what the things are, because what seemingly what's happening is that, that when parcels arrive, people are being charged customs charges and uh, local taxes as well, um, which none of us knew about. So um, there are a few people um, who have parcels coming out to them. Um, if Please let me know what happens when they arrive, if that's the case, and we'll work something out, because um, we genuinely believed when our government said that um, there would be, you know, they'd done a, a good deal and it would be frictionless, that we, we wouldn't have any problems. But seemingly... Idiots. Seemingly there are lots. And if I tell you that some of our couriers... Imagine have, if we were all as bad at our jobs as them. Uh, we wouldn't survive, would we? No. <clears throat> and what's really upsetting, really, is that we spent a lot of last year trying to find new ways to... We can't run courses here, so we've tried to find new ways to earn a living. And one of them was, thanks to a lot of you, was you know um, supplying um, new students abroad. So um, I'm not saying that we won't do it. We just have to find out what it means. So please don't be cross or frustrated if you get charges. Just let me know, and we'll we'll work out some sort of something with you. Um, right, I'll shut up now. I'll get on mark. I'm going to use the old one just to get the length. You have to adjust the length of these things to get the thread sticking out the right length. And it can be a bit of trial and error. It's going to help if I get compare it against the other one to give me the right length. Right, Mark, you've actually got a couple of questions here. OK. All right, so Number Cruncher, hello. He says, if it's driftwood, how do you know it's from Devon? Did you say something about driftwood? No, I don't think. I think you're on the wrong channel. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Sorry, I thought you'd. I thought you'd missed something. Um, no, I don't think I said anything uh, about no, driftwood. Oh no, no. Okay, sorry. He's talking to Eddie Cameron because Eddie Cameron is making a solly bullet. Right. So Eddie Cameron, <laughs> sorry, tree man. Got their own chat going on yeah, in the chat. He's making a solid body telly type guitar from genuine Devonian driftwood. Got it. Right. right. So that's where Number Country comes in. Wow. Um, nice. Uh, like a kite, yeah, you, you can, you, you might be able to see me at some point, but not now. Um, I can't do both. Um, so Brian Ragland's channel says, can you make me a CC Devil Skull BC Rich Guitar copy from the Glam Poison? The, <laughs> bland, gla the bland, bland Glam Poison. Yeah, we'll work it out. Only three in existence. Right, well, now. Yeah, well, we can't do direct copies of people's guitars because we'd get sued, wouldn't we? But we can certainly do something inspired by, um, and you basically you just need to change. You need to be able to point at three things and say, "Look, that's different. That's different, and that's different." And that could be the dimensions of the neck. It could be your choice of pickup. It could be a colour. It could be anything. But I would certainly recommend that you you did something different. We don't like to just directly copy other people's work because, um, you know, it would, would annoy me if I'd spent a long time designing and building a, a special guitar that there's only three of in the world and then some oik <laughs> starts punting them out for a few hundred quid, you know. Not that I would do that, but you get my point. So, yes, I will certainly make you a custom guitar inspired by anything you like, but we would have to do something so it's not an exact copy. Yeah, and we actually... There isn't much stuff that we turn away um, when, when people come to us, but one of the things we've had to turn away in the past um, is people asking for copies of, of... Well, I've been standing here holding this pickup now for ages, so I'm just going to install it. Um, just note how quick it is to install. Most, most, especially if you've already had a pickup inside, it's going to be this simple. So what I'm going to do is put the, the threaded part in, and then the nut 
and the washer goes on the outside. So, um, if you can't reach, what you can do is um, put a straw in and then thread your thing onto the straw or anything will do. Look, I've got a bit of bind in there. That would do. Make a little adjustment. What you could do is put your anything through a straw or a bit of binding or anything and then you just hook your thing into the end and then that will help you to guide it through there lovely another thing you can do is tie a bit of string around the little hole there there's a little hole in the uh, jack socket there a bit of string and just pull it through. Where there's a will, there's a way. You'll get it through. Um, I'm going to nip it up. Right, Mark. Yeah. Um, right, there's a uh, like a kite says uh, one of his acoustics has a dead spot under the saddle pickup. Is there any way to improve this? Yeah, it could be that the under that the slot isn't flat. Um. It could be that the saddle slot here underneath isn't flat and you see because it works the saddle works by pressing down onto this the saddle works by pressing down so it could be two things Blurry. it could be I'll use the other camera it could be the saddle isn't flat at the bottom or it could be that your under the bridge isn't flat um, sometimes also, you check that your saddle is, is loose in the slot. You should be able to, it shouldn't bind in the slot because that can happen as well. If, if, the, if the saddle is binding, then it might not be pressing down onto the transducer. Um, it only works by pressure, you see. Um, it senses the pressure of the string, turns it into a signal. So if it's not feeling any pressure, you won't get any signal. So that goes underneath there. So the, the one I've put in now, I need to feed it up through the hole. So what I'll do sometimes is use something, again, something pokey to poke through the hole from the top. Maybe an old string would do. Find the hole and then you can kind of line your pickup up with it and you just need to feed it up through the hole. Um, can I just say, T TV101 says um, it looks like you need more than one arm, no, you know, several arms. <laughs> sorry, yes, well, as, we, as our regular viewers will know, guitar makers have got three arms. Guitar makers have got three hands and um, you develop your third hand as you uh, gain experience. And he says they need to be small, small, small hands. Yeah. A teacher once said to me, your, your skinny little wrists are going to come in useful one day. Did he? She. Did she? Yeah. She was right, weren't she? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having much luck here, though. Obviously, this can be a bit tricky. Um, these kind of things are much easier, I've noticed, when there aren't people watching you. Have you noticed that? <laughs> um, can, can I ask a question? Because B Power has said, I think he, he says, I assume that if you need to change those coin batteries on the pickup, you would need to unscrew it. And Aha, take it out. well, they're not batteries, Aha. you see. The, those coin batteries are not batteries. Let me get this through and I'll just show you a close up. Come on. Texas Toast probably knows an easier way to do this. <laughs> um, if you're still watching, by the way, thanks for your lovely comment. We do appreciate it. He's on the coffee with me. Both. Who sure is? Enough. Texas Toast. Good. It's just, it's, it's more, see, you'll find the same. It, it, people are watching at all different time zones, aren't they? So it's morning. I keep bending it. Um, 
So, um... Well, can we just say hi to Westbourne Dave? Um, he's, uh... He's here somewhere. He's watching, and he's just about to... He's watching from Illinois. Um, wow. So, hi, Westbourne Dave. He's got to go. See you later. Catch you later. Catch um, you later, Dave. <laughs> you can check back later if you want to hear what the guitar sounds like. Come back later. It'll be about 10 minutes. Um, so, so Clint, or 11 at this rate. Super Clunk Come on. in Hawaii is uh, saying he's actually making a thin line tally uh, with, um, only, with, with only F holes so as access for wiring. So, just the F holes? Yeah, so Not skinny. the rest of the guitar, just the F holes? No, a <laughs> thin line tally with just F holes. And um, skinny, you need skinny hands for that as well. I'm beginning to think there's no hole. Or the thing's too thick for the hole. <laughs> here it is. Um, so Texas, Texas is only still here, but he doesn't know a better way. So, <laughs> so skinny wrists, help. Anyway, it came up through, and now the the saddle just fits down on top like that. Simple. Now inside, what I like to do is just twist this until. I might need to loosen that off again. But you can twist that up until the wire stops rattling about inside. Um, or if there's enough wire, you can stick it to the side. Um, but these things, again, I'm going to rip these out. I hate these things. These things inside the guitar to hold the wires, they end up rattling around inside the guitar more often than not as well. So let's get rid of those. Well, I don't know if you said that, but this is why Stevie yeah. Um, wants it changing, isn't it? Yeah. So. That'll do for now. Um, let's get the strings back on and then you guys can hear what this actually sounds like. Um, yeah, super capacitor. It's not a battery. Um, it looks like a battery but it's actually a super capacitor. I think it's replaceable. It, it looks like it's replaceable, um, but it's not a battery, super cap. And what I didn't explain about these is the advantage of these is rechargeable. So it works like a rechargeable battery, but the beauty of it is it, re it charges in 60 seconds. So, <clears throat> It's not actually new technology. <laughs> the technology for this is actually 20 years old, <laughs> according to the website. Um, so it's actually 20 year tech, old technology. It's just fil filtering down to us guitar players. Um, we've been using it for a couple of years now, these, um, and I absolutely love them. Um, keeps the weight down on the guitar, stops your battery from rattling around. I actually had somebody once sent me um, a one-off, unique archtop guitar through the post. A super special instrument through the post. Left the battery connected inside, which came loose, rattled about in the back of the van, and it actually broke through the side of the, uh, of the, of the instrument. It broke through the side and made a crack um, from the inside, like somebody whacked it with a hammer. Nasty. All that could have been avoided with a super capacitor. So that's what it's all about. Charges in 60 seconds, lasts for 16 hours. So it's a little bit different way of working. Probably once a week you want to plug it in and charge it. But you'll never have to buy another battery again. What about that? When I say plug it in and charge it, you'll all have heard the urban myth <laughs> where the, the devoted mum buys the son a guitar for Christmas or something and then she takes it back to the shop, electric guitar, and she, and she says, but we put a plug on the end of the lead and we plugged it in and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping that's just an urban myth. But in this case, myth becomes reality because um, now you're not going to plug this into the mains, but there's a, an adapter there, a transformer, which takes it, steps the voltage down to nine volts, I believe. Mm. And basically you plug that in, you plug it into the wall for 60 seconds. 
and then you unplug and you're ready to go for 16 hours. So 60 seconds. Like, so before you go to your gig, plug it in for 60 seconds and you'll be good to go, well, for a week or a couple of weeks, depending on how much you play. 16 hours solid playing from 60 seconds of charging. So what I recommend is every time you go for your gig or you just plug it in for, for 60 seconds before you go, you're good to go. Um, never have to buy another battery again. What about that? Um, can I can I butt in a couple of minutes? Yeah, you can talk while I'm restringing this. Right, well, first of all, can we say thank you to uh, the Brian Raglan Challenge? He's bought me a coffee. Uh, he's, oh, sent, he's sent us $5. He's bought me a coffee. Thank you very much. Um, and he said, for being such an inspiration to new guitar makers like me, it's 7.30am here in Florida, USA. Um, I've got to tell you, I didn't know this, but Matt Tomon... Where, where he stays, um, it's 6.30 in the morning in Denver, and um, that's what, and Texas Toast, it's 6.30 for him as well. They live in the same area. Wow. They're up at 6.30 in the morning. That's wow. why they're on the coffee. Um, so, um, Get some coffee in your right, stand. And Texas Toast was saying, he, I'll just read this out. I was wondering the Cheers, other day. Cheers, guys. I was wondering the other day about battery technology for the guitar pickups, or rather pickups with 50,000 hours on a standard battery. Because, I mean, it is an issue, isn't it, batteries? And, um, I oh, don't they know drive about... me mad. In acoustic guitars, batteries and acoustic guitars don't mix, if you ask me. Um, you know, there are some makers who won't even put a pickup in an acoustic guitar because they're purists, you know. But I'm not that much of a purist. Um, TV101 said he's looking in the shop. He can't see them. If you look under acoustic trio... My side, they should be. Oh, I don't there. know what category we put them under. No, it should be in there. You can yeah. just search. Well, if you can't find them now, email us, we'll send you the link. Um, um, and we'll have a look after we've finished the live stream to see if maybe there's a display issue. But we did, we did check before we, um, before we came on, and they were, it did seem to be working. with some of the comments to be honest right um stephen adams is in in the house in the workshop today he said i forgot to drill the hole for my ground on my bailey guitar on the one he's built um <laughs> and had to drill it and then feed <laughs> feed the wire in nightmare yeah well that's it with carol can you find me a 12 gauge plain string for this because they're not in there um yeah that's one of the things about guitar making um the, the order you do the jobs is, can be vital. Um, so I guess this is a good time to talk about, um, I might as well just mention the, the website. So guitarmaking.co.uk is our academy of guitar making where I've taken um, my basic methods of building guitars and we've filmed the whole process step by step and we've made design and build your own electric and acoustic guitars um, and their online courses you need to be a premium member to get access that's basically what it's all about so yeah if you think i'm waffling and goofing about too much you're probably right but this is our live streams which we do for free <laughs> the the courses that are for our premium members there's no goofing about it's just pure um, edited they're professionally edited videos that are short and sweet um, but we've left all the action there from start to finish. You can watch um, watch and learn, basically. So building a, um, an electric guitar is about 50 or 60 basic jobs that I believe anybody can do. In fact, I know anybody can do them because I've taught over 400 people face to face here in the Bailey workshop um, how to build guitars from scratch. Some of them have gone on to be um, professional guitar makers in their own right. Some of them just carry on building for fun. Some of them keep coming back five or six times, some of them. Because it's fun, isn't it, building guitars? Um, Mark, it's supposed need... to be anyway. I need to interrupt you. So I'm just going to show you how we actually put strings on in a minute, but Carol wants to say something first. Go on, Carol. Well, and um, just say thank you to Texas Toast because he sent you $20, $20 no, for beer. Texas Toast. He sent you some money. Some oh, beer cheers, money. man. Thank you. Um, and he said he's doing. He's doing. I appreciate a, that. He's doing a setup today uh, with Mike Learn. Um, 
that's one what he's streaming today. I Brilliant. Guess. All right. So thank cool. You, but thank you for joining <laughs> us. It's it's great. Yeah. Well, it's nice to have you. VIP. Um, VIP in the chat. <laughs> So I'm going to show you guys how we put strings on. Um, just as a little bonus for you guys, I'm sure most of you already know. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie Cameron says, can you do a close-up again? Yeah, um, it's coming up. So uh, don't worry, I'm going to get it for you. So um, here down at the body end, it's easy. Obviously, this will this will change um, depending on your guitar. If it's an electric guitar, the the method of attaching the strings could be different. But with an acoustic, put the ball end into the hole, put the pin in. These ones have got a groove on, so I'm putting the groove down the string. And then what we do is we pull up as we push the pin in, we pull the string up, just to make sure that that ball end is pulling up against the bridge plate at the bottom. If you've got the strings off, you can actually just check that, but usually you can't. So you're pulling up to make sure the ball end is against the bridge plate there. So then at the other end, what I like to do is have the hole diagonal like this, so you can't really see the hole, but if I put the string through, can you see how it's... I like to have the hole diagonal like this. So the string goes straight through the hole. Give yourself a bit of slack. I like to give myself, um, what, two or three fingers of slack. You might want to adjust the amount of slack depending on how many winds you want when you post. But the general idea is to have as few winds around the post as possible for tuning stability. So a couple of two or three fingers of slack. And then what we do is we go round the back towards the middle, underneath and over. Did you get that? <laughs> it's easier than it sounds round the back towards the middle underneath and over and then you get this kind of like the string kind of locks down on itself i'll get you a close-up of that in a minute i'm going to repeat that on the other side just to show you on the other side it's exactly the same but opposite so um yeah there are better videos for this by the way on the website um this is all a bit rough and ready like we say on the live streams but it keeps us out of trouble mostly so nice and tight well that's really nice Mark. Matt Beals is saying Matt Beals is really happy because he says it's his two favorite channels it feels oh, yeah. like the, the circle Texas Toast and guitar across the ocean and guitar I believe and... Texas Toast must be in Texas I guess yeah uh, well wow. I don't know no you see it must be in Denver if Matt's, Matt Tomlin's in Denver they live all right I think I don't know Right, straight through the hole. Let me do this. Okay. <clears throat> straight through the hole. Um, it goes round the back, toward the middle, underneath, and over. So that's my little rhyme. Round the back, toward the middle, underneath, and over. That's what I say to myself in my head. Round the back, toward the middle, underneath, and over. And then what I do, what you can't see there, is I, I've got a way of holding down with my finger there and pulling up with my um, my other finger. I've got a way of holding the tension on the string and holding it down below the previous wind. So you want each wind to go below the previous one. You only really want one and a half to two winds on, really. Any more than that is just a waste and can cause tuning instability, especially with guitars with trems. So I'll do that one more time for you because I know you like my little rhyme. I've dropped the pin now. 
I know you like it when I drop things as well. Mark, uh, Rock and Roller says that should be your new thing. Instead of measure twice, cut once, it should be round the back, underneath and over. <laughs> round the back, toward the middle, underneath and over. <laughs> so first of all, I'm going to adjust this um, post so that the string can just go straight through. You can't see the hole there, but the string can now just go straight through and then I can do my little trick. So I'll try and do it here in position. Um, so the string just goes straight through the hole, bend that one out of the way. That's a good point actually, make sure you bend these out of the way. Um, and if you're doing this a lot, like uh, Texas Toast and guys like that, professional guys, you, you might want to wear safety goggles because you get one of these in your eye, one of these jaggy things in your eye, it's going to hurt. So I always make sure they're pressed down out of the way. Um, and if, if I'm doing a lot, you, you know, I'm wearing my safety goggles. So um, it's a bit blurry, isn't it? Let's try that. So round the back toward the middle, underneath and over. Round the back toward the middle, underneath and over. So I'll do the next one at normal speed. <laughs> Mark. And if you want to see it properly, you're going to have to become a premium member and, <laughs> and well, you'll get the edited version where we get all the full close-up versions and all that. But this is the best we can do for a live stream. Listen, it's not you, just you. Texas Toe says, now is about the time I stab myself with a string and bleed all over the shop, give up and make Chris do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. So, do you want to take some questions, Mark? I'm going to just do this one. Okay. Yeah, questions would be good. Okay, so um, the Brian Ragland channel says, I have a thin line explorer shaped acoustic uh, Matthias, Matthias Jabs model guitar, and was wondering if I should add this unit to it. Would it be recommended to do so in your opinion? Wow, an explorer. What would it be replacing? What, what's on it at the moment? Uh, he hasn't. So Brian, what yeah, I would I would say the answer to that question would depend on what you're replacing. Um, obviously, if you're happy with the sound, don't don't change it. It's like the number one golden rule of guitars is if it works, don't fix it. <laughs> if your pickup's broken though, then it might be certainly something to consider. Um, now, I don't know that guitar off the top of my head, I'd have to look it up. It might be that you've already got a battery compartment built in, in which case you're not really gaining anything, are you? So, another advantage though that I forgot to mention of these supercapacitors, the, um, the way supercapacitors work is slightly different to batteries. Um, so a battery will slowly fade over time and you don't notice the sound of your guitar changing, but a lot of these built-in preamps the sound will, it will sound fantastic when you put a brand new fresh battery on. And then you don't really notice it fading until it starts sounding like a wet fart. At some point, you play your guitar and it just sounds like you've soiled your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, you put a fresh battery in and away you go again. Well, the advantage of the super capacitors is that um, they're kind of like all or nothing. So, um, it's, it's like you've got a fresh battery all the time until it dies and then you'll again it will sound like a wet fart <laughs> but up until that point it sounds like you've got a fresh battery in and so that's another advantage is it always sounds like you've got just put a brand new battery in and that's a, one of the major advantages so i need to tune this hopefully the battery is working on this thing can you find a tuner for me, Carol? Uh, yeah. Okay, I can't... Just give me a minute. There's people who've got questions. No, the tuner's more important than I know, that. but I'm just saying I'll, I can't answer a, a tuner. You mean... Can the, does this one actually That's a D, isn't it? Is that the 
best angle that, is it? Um, do you want, do you want the, so, um, Brian Raglan channel says it has no pickup at all. It's got no pickup. Is Explorer. Um, yeah, so my advice is, has to be really probably take it to a shop or some professional guitar repairman to have a look at it because you might have to drill some holes and uh, although it's quite doable unless you feel proficient at that kind of thing um, you might want to let someone who knows what they're doing look at it. Um, I, I can't really say any more than that without actually seeing the guitar so if you want me to send me some pictures of it or even better head over to the forum guitarmaking.co.uk there's a free forum there free community of um, enthusiastic builders who are all um, helping each other out with with all sorts of issues just like that so head over to there take a few pictures of it so we know, know we know what we're looking at because um, it might just be a case of dropping a pickup in um, but if it hasn't had already had a pickup in there it might be a bit more complicated than that. You might have to drill some holes in it. Um, so my best advice would be take some pictures and upload them to the, the forum and then we'll have a look at it for you. Because yeah, it's, it's a thin line. So that's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, <clears throat> Mark, there's, there's, we're getting a backlog of comments and questions. Okay, go on. Uh, what I'm going to do while Carol's talking is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug this in now for 60 seconds to charge up the supercapacitor. Let's just move it. So, so you can so see what's going needs. on. <laughs> Obviously, please needs. don't do this. Please don't do this with any ordinary guitar because oh. it won't work. <laughs> this is these are special pickups um, with special supercapacitors on board. Uh, there yeah. are other channels for that kind of thing. And, and can I? I don't know if you said this earlier, but we have found the people that make my site is M, capital M, small I, capital S, small I. Um, and it's the acoustic trio air, and the, and the jack's actually called the is it the simple jack? I think that's what Something they. Like that. um, but the the guys that make it are based. I think they're based in New York. They're they're American, um, and they are really nice, uh, really helpful people. Um, so if you've got the, the 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 system can't be just attached to any old guitar necessarily, but they are really helpful um, if you have any questions about what it can be. So, for example, um, some of the more uh, the bigger uh, LR bags, acoustic pickups, they can't attach them to. Um, it's not it's not powerful enough. That's why they've chosen the element. Yeah, I did put the link in the description below. Um, Tony's found it now. Tony, you're you're looking for it. He's found it. So you should be able to find it just by clicking that. Can I ask you a serious question, rather than just making a comment? Yep. Right. So, like a kite says. Um, he said, how do you feel about um, having a brass plate, a brass bridge plate, to protect, uh, you know, wear from the ball, the balls going through? Um, the, the yeah, so that's something that we normally, is normally reserved for a repair technique. And it certainly has helped me once or twice. Um, inside the guitar, what we're talking about is inside the guitar, under the bridge is a piece of wood called the bridge plate, a thin piece of wood. And it's got these six holes drilled through it. Now what can happen is when you're drilling the holes, you can get breakout and that plate can get damaged. And also over the years of restringing and whatever, the plate can get damaged and the, the ball ends can start pulling through the holes. In that case, we use a brass plate. On, well, one repair technique is to re replace the bridge plate. But that's a big, nasty, horrible job. Um, and you can actually avoid doing that by using one of these. Um, it's a brass plate that fits in inside, usually with double-sided tape to hold it on. And it's got the six holes through for the pins. And obviously, it's reinforcing those holes on the inside. Um, stopping them from getting further damaged and it stops the ball ends from pulling through. So it's not something that I would do on a new guitar because I think there's something to be said with the, the ball ends touching the, the wood. Um, but certainly 
to salvage a guitar that would otherwise be unusable without replacing the bridge plate. Replacing the bridge plate is a nightmare job that you would avoid at all costs. And one of those saving graces is that you can use one of those plates. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Um, bridge repair plate or something like that. But you'll, you'll find those available if you do a Google search. Um, if you're having problems with your strings, pulling through um, because the bridge plate is damaged. That's what they're for, really. Um, but having said that, put them on a new guitar. Um, when you start your guitar making company, you can put them on your guitars and use it as a sales feature, can't you? So I reckon that's had at least 60 seconds. Right, before you play, can you deal with some questions? Let's see if we've got a signal for the tuner. Yeah, okay. I can deal with some questions. Coming up for the big finale, though. Yeah, but you, you need to answer some of these questions. Right, so, um, uh, Something's not working. It might be the, is that not, is that tuner, you haven't used that tuner for a while? I don't even know if the, does the light, does the, does that lead work? What, I think the tuner's okay. The tuner I was going to use, the battery's gone on it. Of course. Of course. Here we go. We've got a signal. Uh, yeah, Matt Bill says the thing you're talking about is called a plate mate and he makes his own. Yeah, well done. Plate mate. So, what I'm going to do is stretch the strings. What I'd like to do is lift it out of the saddle. Stretch it all the way down, lift it out of the nut. Always pre stretch your strings. I'm going to do it very quickly. Normally, I would take a bit longer over this, but I'm just going to quickly stretch them so that they stay reasonably well in tune. If you do this twice or three times, even, then your guitar will stay perfectly in tune. I've had people bring guitars back to me and say, um, Mark, it won't stay in tune. And you stretch the strings and it's perfect. So um, stretching the strings is vital if you want your guitar to stay in tune. I think I'll... Uh... Uh, can, you, can you say thank you to Cheese Whiskey? Cheers. He sent you some beer money as well. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm. Much appreciated. And he says, I have a beer on me. I've just finished the design course and I'm halfway through the guitar making course. Yeah. Still collecting all the tools needed and the workbench should arrive this week. And he said that um, two things about that. One, one is that um, he showed his he showed his wife, he showed his partner the um, the little the, the tiny little plane. Right? Yeah. And he, he got it in his stocking for Christmas, so he oh, was well up in beautiful. That. Um, he also said, funnily, that when when the router bits we sent him arrived, he didn't realise they were coated. Because <laughs> <laughs> <So, laughs> they, they feel like they're, I was saying, they're our safety rubber, they're our rubber router bits, safety rubber, joke. Right? Anyway, they come with a protective coating. Um, can I also tell you that B Power, I think it was B Power, um, said that he loves the headstock. Shape. Okay, so let's um, plug it into an amp. And see what happens. So can I just finish this? He loves a headstock shape, but he was asking because um, you—it's interesting because you use that on uh, the bandsman on some of the electrics as well. Yeah, it's is my it, small headstock shape. Is it That's the same why pattern? I put it on. Yes, it is. Um, well, roughly, it has evolved slightly over the years. It's changed a little bit over the years, but it is—it is pretty much um, pretty much the same as the as the electric guitar shape. Can you see that? It's my small shape, which I wanted to put on my small acoustic guitar, you see. Um, and all the holes, the, the spacing is the same? Yeah, pretty much the same. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, when I started making acoustics, because I came from an electric guitar background, 
I wanted to be a smart ass, didn't I? So I, I wanted to make it play like my electric. So I made, I made it the same dimensions. I made it slightly narrower. Um, and most people, when they play it, they love my guitar. So I do still make them that size. It's my standard size. Um, but, but nowadays, my acoustics, um, the, the standard nut width is an inch and three quarters. It used to be 11 sixteenths, an inch and 11 sixteenths. It used to be about 43 and a half mil. Now it's 45 mil. But these are all things, if I'm making you a guitar, you can specify, you can tell me. Um, and as I was saying earlier, when, when I did that drawing that I was showing you earlier, we, on the Zoom meeting, we went through all the different parameters and, um, and the drawing is what we ended up with. I ask all the questions and then from your answers, a design emerges. So um, let's see if we can get some power. So remember, I plugged that in for 60 seconds. Well, maybe a bit longer, but. Yeah, Theron's saying, can you cut your string ends off? It's upsetting him. Is it doing your head in, Theron? It's upsetting him. Um, okay. Whilst you're setting that up, can I tell you another couple of things? Yeah. William Boy Guitars is in the house from Brazil. Remember William? William, yeah. Um, and, uh, he, he wow. said he came 12 years ago. <laughs> so so um, back in the days when we could run workshop courses, William came, um, he was living in London and he came up uh, from London just before we left uh, the UK to go back to Brazil. And he did a, a five day, um, uh, build, well, was it the Build Your First Guitar course um, here with us. He's gone back to Brazil. 12 years ago and um, you should check him out William Boy Guitars he's, he's been doing some amazing work over in Brazil we felt a little bit jealous of him didn't we Mark because uh, yeah. he said um, one of the things I'll a never bit. ever forget is we brought a piece of purple heart out um, of the woodroom and he, he said what you know oh that looks familiar and Mark said oh it's just the, the most beautiful looking purple wood and he said he looked and he said my granddad's um, or my dad's uh, veranda is all made of purple heart because of course Brazil is the home of beautiful, beautiful tones. So um, yeah, I don't know if, if uh, Veranda's still alive, <laughs> if it still survived. But uh, anyway, lovely to have you. Um, <laughs> and Ma, Mrs. Texas toast in the house. Oh today. wow! And she's uh, she's. We're now now we're honoured. Appreciated. Um, I'm doing, which is really nice. Yeah, the Thank you. Trying to get a word in, Mrs. Maybe we should have our own channel. Yeah. <laughs> Put a link into your live stream so that we can all come and watch you afterwards. Yeah, that would be really cool, actually. Um... So there you go. Just to prove that it's it's working. Uh, I'm not going to embarrass myself for too long. Stretch them strings, Mark. Oh, stretch them strings. Right, isn't it? God knows what that sounds like to you with our you're only hearing it through this little lapel mic. <laughs> so sing a song Carol. There you go. I'm sure you, you guys will make it sound better than me. <laughs> I think uh, I think I'll I'll just leave it there before I embarrass myself anymore. I need you to say something about the finish as well. I can see. This is an old cellulose finish. It's a bit distressed now. It's quite an old one. It's one of my early guitars, like I was saying. So it's been hanging around long enough to suffer from this thing that we call cold checking. So if you look at a lot of old vintage finishes, you'll see these weird lines. They almost look like cracks in the finish. If you hold it at the right light, that's called cold checking. It looks quite bad. It's usually angle. caused by um, 
it's called cold check-in, but it's because it's usually caused by um, when you take your guitar out in the cold. Um, it gets cold, you're carrying it to the gig, and then you get to the gig and they've got the central heating on and it's blasting hot. You open the case, I've actually seen this happen before my very eyes. You open the case and <laughs> the heat hits it and it starts to crack. So it can happen instantly, I've actually seen it happen. Um, but usually with an old cellulose finish, it's usually something that happens over time. And um, yeah, it can be completely invisible until you catch it just in the right light and then you, and then you see it. So yeah, check out some of your old guitars and you might be surprised to find um, cold check-in. Um, it proves that it's a cellulose finish and it's actually one of the things, believe it or not, <laughs> that some builders will actually do on purpose to make their finishes look old. So one technique is to do it on purpose to make your finish look vintage. So you can purposely warm your guitar up and then blast it with cold air from your compressor and that will make it crack. So yeah, it, 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 it has been known to be done on purpose. <laughs> In our case, it's, it's just, um, you know, it's just wear and tear, so. Uh, Interestingly. It doesn't affect the tone or obviously, you know, I mean, still, from most angles, it will look perfect. It's just if you if you catch it at the right angle, you'll be able to see um, see the cracks. It's just the tiny little cracks in the finish. And I think you you said um, when you were talking about the finishing course before uh, Christmas, you said yourself that um, it's the sort of finishing is the thing that guitar makers are often least happy with. Um, and I know that when Billy, this is one of Billy's, isn't it? Um, Billy. Work, spent a lot of time working on this because sometimes the um, we've had batches of stuff, haven't we, that has behaved differently. Yeah, well, there was one time where we were ordering cellulose paint for, for years and it was fine. And then one day we started having problems with it and it was the same part number, exact same part number we were ordering, but they changed the formula um, and they changed it to a pre-cut which is basically pre-cut cellulose is it's cellulose with a catalyst included. So it dries a lot quicker, but it dries a lot quicker and a lot harder and a lot more brittle. So it's a lot more prone to cold checking and um, that kind of thing. So yes, they changed the part number on us once, which didn't, didn't help us. Um, so nowadays we use, um, we actually use a UV finish I think we're, we're one of the only people in the UK doing this. Um, we might be the only people doing it, but... Um, a lot of people have given up on it, haven't they? Yeah, but they keep improving. When we first started using it, it was absolutely fantastic, but not perfect. Um, sometimes we would have problems with it, but nowadays they've improved the formula and it's got better and better and better. Nowadays, I think it's absolutely fantastic. So our UV finish, we spray it and then we zap it with a light and it's dry, ready to polish instantly. So we can, we can actually spray and polish a guitar in a day. We don't have to wait for any paint to dry, um, which for me is an absolute miracle. So we are truly living in the future. It's um, so insolvent free, isn't it? I yeah, so it. yeah, that's another major reason we use it is because it, um, it's actually non-harmful. They don't actually tell you what's in it because it's a secret formula, but it comes. You can post it through the post. It it's comes, not corrosive. Comes with a green label. Mm. It's non-harmful, um, whereas cellulose is a neurotoxin, and that won't do you any good at all. It will. It will. Um, it will clog your lungs up and your brain. Um, this stuff is actually non-harmful to the atmosphere and to us, and it's also a fantastic finish. This is actually our our UV finish here. I'm going to show you another one before we go. Um, actually, you regulars will all know. That Whose guitar is that, Mark? This is our Roland's guitar, made from 400-year-old walnut from Glastonbury. Woohoo! <laughs> Imbued with rock and roll. Um, Chris Otterwell right, says... Right, don't go anywhere. What did you call it? 
it's it's actually UV so like the light UV light um, and we we actually it's made the stuff we use is made by an American company um, who are called Cure UV um, and they're based in Florida I think um, yeah it's not as simple as just buying the UV lacquer because you need to buy um, the special light so there's a light a special light bulb it's 2000 watts and it gives off a light at a specific frequency which dries the paint so the lacquer that we spray contains a catalyst which is activated by the light so you spray this stuff on here's another one that we did you spray this stuff on and um, and it will just sit there and never dry for it forever until you zap it with the light and then it dries instantly so major advantage for guitar maker um, we used to have to hang them up for like weeks and weeks and weeks um, well, we're in Scotland months. As sometimes. you guys know, if you've ever tried to spray a guitar, you have to hang them up for ages until they're dry enough to polish. This stuff dries instantly and you can polish it. And it's absolutely gorgeous. To me, it feels like, say, six month old cellulose is what it reminds me of. Wow. I absolutely love it. Um, this is the future of finishes, guys. Um, Mike um, Johnson is in the chat and he said that they're quite expensive. The yeah, kit is the, 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 um, cheap. The, the, the kit to do this, basically, um, I spent my life's savings on one <laughs> at one point. But, um, but for us, it's worth it. But for the average person at home building just a few guitars, it's really not worth it. The, the setup to do this costs many, many thousands of pounds. So big investment for us, but worth it. Well, but you, it's worth checking out their website because um, we've got the portable... Um, We've got the portable version, not the camera. Yeah, if you're interested in checking it out, they're called Cure UV. Yeah, and it's SBD UVI, I think, is the actual. Yeah, the, the they they sell a parent. guitar making, guitar finishing kit, and that's what we got. We got the bigger version. In fact, we were the first people to ever buy one. <laughs> we didn't realise we were the guinea pigs, but um, we did go through a bit of learning curve. Um, I know that other guitar makers actually gave up on it. But we never gave up on it. We carried on um, persevering, and I think, well, I think you've got to agree that the the results are. And you can't see it in person, obviously, but if I try and reflect some light on it, hopefully you can see. It's pretty damn good. The paint, the, the lac actual lacquer, isn't cheap either, and neither are the bulbs. But what we found is it didn't you say it goes further? Yeah, um, because. Um, there's no solvent in the lacquer. So normally when you spray um, paint, normal lacquer, most, well, a, lot, a good proportion of what you're spraying is, is the solvent or the carrier. So these solids, this, the, the finish is solid, but it's dissolved in thinners or some kind of carrier to enable it to be sprayed or painted. And then what happens over time is the solvent evaporates and leaves behind the solid surface and that takes a lot of time in fact with cellulose I've had guitars where I've sprayed them and then nine months later you open the case and you can still smell the paint so there's still solvents evaporating in fact I think the solvent continues to evaporate well for a long time probably pretty much forever if you look at a real old uh, cellulose finish you'll notice they get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner um, I think that's the, the solvent's continuing to evaporate until you're left just with a really brittle, um, thin surface. So um, the advantage of this, no solvents. Now obviously this isn't available to everybody, so I'm, uh, I'm trying not to flex too much here. No, but, I mean, but there's, there's a couple of people making comments in the chat that there are, are other options, there are other set of options. The problem, the problem the, we've the, got... Yeah, the truth is that um, you can get that kind of finish with any product. It doesn't matter what you're using. Um, and the methods and the techniques are all the same. What I was, um, what I was alluding to earlier was before Christmas, um, I spent... <laughs> days and days and days editing, filming and editing for the latest addition to our Guitar Academy, which is the Guitar Finishing Course.
So it's still a bit of a work in progress, but um, there are now two examples on there of um, work pieces being finished. So this is one of them. The, um, this is an ant antique, a vintage amber um, neck. So the wood's actually quite white, but it's got a stain on it. You can miss out the stain if you don't want the vintage amber effect. But on the website now, um, there is a guitar finishing course where I've demonstrated exactly how we did this. And of course, we're using our UV paint, but that's irrelevant. Um, you could be doing this using any paint, um, whether you're using an aerosol or a spray gun, whatever equipment you've got, at the very least, you can, um, you can buy aerosols um, and do, do the whole thing just with those. So um, already on the course for the electric guitar, we do an oiled finish, which is wipe on, wipe off. That's the easiest type of finish. And then on the acoustic guitar course, um, we do a matte finish, which is, um, which is sprayed using the, the, the rattle cans, rattle can jobby. And then our, on the finishing course, we've, we've gone full gloss. So um, something like this. And I also wanted to include um, how to do a sunburst as well. So um, there are lots of different ways to do it. And I'm going to try and cover as many of those different ways as possible eventually. But to start with, I just wanted to cover um, the basics. So that's what we've done. So if you want to see how we did this, you need to become a premium member, sign up, and then you can do, you get access to all our courses, past, present and future, as long as you're a premium member. So, um, yeah, if there was anything that you found interesting or enjoyable about this whole event, then click the like. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon to make sure that you get notified of all our upcoming live streams. Um, Carol's got something she wants to say. Um, we've got something else coming up on Wednesday. Um, yes, Lockdown Lucy. So over the past year or so, now we started doing these live streams just for fun really, to keep ourselves busy during the lockdown. So um, I noticed somebody was asking in the comments right at the start actually, are we under lockdown? And the answer is in fact, yes, we are under full lockdown again. So we're not able to run any of our courses um, under normal conditions. People come from all over the world, as you heard in the comments, from Brazil, from all over Europe, from all over the world. They come to Don't my, li Azad in Iran. my little workshop. Azad in Iran, you're more than welcome. Um, and we do face-to-face -face workshop courses where people build their own guitar from scratch. That's not allowed to happen at the moment during lockdown. Which is, which is why um, we find ourselves in this situation, <laughs> standing in front of a camera warbling like an idiot. So go on, Carol. Well, there's a couple of questions that you didn't answer. So you were talking about um, Eddie Cameron really early on, said it was a random question, but it wasn't because you came, ended up talking about finishing. He asked, he's got to do some polishing. Can you recommend any polishing soap? What do we use? I use Menzerna polishing soap. All different kinds of yeah, them. but any any polishing soap will do. Any car supplier, um, car painter suppliers are the best place. Or if you can't find a guitar maker suppliers that will get that will help you. Um, Stu Max sell good polishing soap. Um, and failing that, um, any good car painter supplier will sell you a bar of polishing soap. Um, just tell them what material you're spraying, and they'll give you the, the right one. But um, but just get a fine medium and a coarse and you'll be laughing. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Check with your supplier to make sure it suits whatever you're polishing. OK, so um, uh, another thing then is that uh, a point was made by Number Cruncher that uh, there are some products available in the US uh, that are UV, that killed by UV, some naturally by sunlight, but they're not available over here. And I just ah. wanted to say two things about that. One is that I rang, in, any, in case anybody says, why didn't you use UK uh, UV? I have contacted every supplier 
uh, and maker of UV um, finishes in the UK and in Europe, and none of them would supply us because we only wanted small amounts. So that's why yeah, we buy. One from of the problems we have, if, you, if you're just making one or two guitars, or even like us, we make 40 or 50 guitars a year, and we still can't buy enough product for some of these suppliers to supply us. So um, it, it doesn't keep. There's no point buying a big vat of stuff. And then the other, the other right, thing. So there's a shelf life to it. Yeah. The other thing is that um, this may, the landscape's changing. I mean, who would have thought that some of the biggest companies in, in the UK, international, you know, can't sell stuff abroad. So it might be that uh, things that are currently not available become available over the coming months when they work out what, what, you know, what the hell's going on. So, so we'll keep an eye on that. Um, right, one last thing. Uh, Mike Johnson said um, he, he sent his wishes to Happy New Year to everybody from the Isle of Man. Um, but one thing he said was that um, obviously 2021's already got better because the finishing course is available. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to say a bit more about... Um, because that was that you you didn't upload that until yeah. seven o'clock on Christmas Eve. Yeah, I was working right up till um, half past six Christmas Eve, <laughs> putting the finishing touches to the, uh, the the finishing course. It's that, again, I'd just like to say about the finishing course is it is just a basic outline at the moment, and we've just got two examples up. But you can use hopefully that information will arm you to do any colour you like, any of these colours up here that you can see you can do using the same technique um, and whatever um, whatever material or equipment you've got hopefully you'll find something in there that will help get you going lots more to come on that front um, fake binding double staining what else all sorts of stuff I'm gonna keep adding more examples um, as time goes on because it's one of the major things people ask us about a lot is um, finishing so on that score just one last thing before we go um, we did promise before Christmas that one of our salubrious premium members was going to become the proud owner of Lockdown Lucy so this is Lockdown Lucy for those of you that don't know I built this guitar completely from scratch completely live on the internet with no safety net you guys got to see every um, every bit of sawdust being created every screw going in every single job was done live on the internet for this guitar so this guitar was built completely live on the internet um, a lot of you guys had input on the design actually and told me what parts to put on it so um, yeah a lot of vested interests there but there can only be one winner. And so, am I right in saying, Carol, that on Wednesday at announce. one o'clock, we're going to be announcing, announcing the, the winner? No! No. Honestly, <laughs> what are you like? What are we announcing then? The comp when, when, if you actually make some time to talk to me, we're going to work out what, how, what the competition right, we're is. We're going to announce Cause, something about the announcement. Right. No, because... The We're thing announcing was, the announcement on Wednesday. Right, somebody, somebody wrote to us and said that they would like to buy, uh, participate in the draw and, and pay for uh, an NHS worker to be in the draw so that they had a chance of winning it. Right. So, do you not remember this? This was before Christmas. And so the, the, the idea is to work out, you know, lots of people have said they want to support us, um, so we, we, we need to come up with terms. Right, so Carol's going to... Come up with a plan, and we'll 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 let you in on it on Wednesday. That's the plan. Yeah. So right. make sure you're here, and uh, yeah. I hope the future's treating you well. Right. It's got to be better than the past, isn't it? Right. Listen, what you don't know is me and Mrs. Texas Toast. We, we're we're gonna we've got a plan for world domination that's just been brewing in the chat. Right? Yeah. She she feels my pain. She feels my pain. That's wonderful. I'm not alone. Yeah. Oh, anyway, Brilliant. B Power says, "Lol, that's the book I mean we love." Well, we're gonna we're gonna back right. off that because we don't want to stop uh, twenty twenty one. Hands right across now. the ocean, then, isn't it? <laughs> Shake your hands. Yay! <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. And for for joining us for oh. this. Uh... <laughs> Lots of people have thanked you for coming back because they said they've missed us. Yeah, well, we've missed you as well, yeah. guys. And thank um, you for joining. Like I say, we was I was hard at it, um, nose to the grindstone. Um, right up until Christmas Eve, 
to get this finishing course up for you. And um, for those of you that are premium members, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I know a lot of you did because you've left. <laughs> yeah, you've left the comments for me. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed those comments as well. Um, so yeah, we're in the future. Um, if there is anything that you would like me to cover this year during our live streams, then make sure to um, make a comment and let us know what it is. If you've got any questions related to guitar making or any of that kind of thing. So all that remains to be said is thank you so much guys for all your support over the Christmas period. Um, if you're waiting for a parcel, then fingers crossed, hopefully um, they're not gonna completely build a wall around the UK and not let anything in and or out. Um, but it's not looking good at the moment, is it? <laughs> anyway, let's hope 2021 is better than the last one. That's all I can say. And uh, of course, when all's said and done, the most important thing, round the back toward the middle, underneath and over, and then measure twice and cut once. Thanks folks. See you on Wednesday.